These days, the average person lives in comfort, too much comfort. People constantly consume, don't move much, and have no idea how to prepare their bodies and minds for uncomfortable situations. And uncomfortable situations are bound to happen. When they do, people usually cope with the uncertainty by trying to stay inside their comfort zones and diving deeper into pleasures. In reality, real personal growth happens when we accept the uncontrollable events in our lives and take responsibility to fix what is in our control. If we look for opportunities when the uncontrollable happens, nothing can stop us and we achieve the calmness of the mind. But to achieve this flow of life is not something easy and not something quick. That's why today I want to talk about one of the best stoic practices which can help you gain control over your body and mind and help you endure those uncomfortable situations. Cold water. As a young slave, the Greek Stoic philosopher Epictetus was horribly mistreated by his owner. One day, the latter twisted his leg with remarkable cruelty. If you continue to do that, Epictetus remarked, you will break my leg. Sure enough, his master, ignoring his pleas, had soon twisted and broken Epictetus' limb. Didn't I tell you, he mildly asked, that you would break my leg? This story about Epictetus reacting peacefully to something that should cause huge amounts of pain has become one of those stories that represent this stoic ideal. In stoicism, the mind is above the body. If you are able to properly control your mind, things like pain, which comes from the outside, will have no effect on your governing principle, as all the things outside of your mind are out of your control. You can choose to either accept the pain and endure it, or lose against it. It's in your control. In order to learn to control your mind, you have to train it to suffer through uncomfortable and or painful situations. Stoicism is a practical philosophy philosophy and should be treated like one. And of course, we can't go on breaking our legs like Epictetus, so that's why jumping into cold water is one of the best ways to experience this philosophy nowadays and practice your endurance to pain. I try to go into cold water as much as possible. If I have limited time or can't access any body of water, I usually just get by with cold showers. But if it's possible for you, I highly recommend training your mind by going into a cold lake, river, sea, and so on. Usually before going into the water, I do the guided Wim Hof breathing technique. If you are unfamiliar with Wim Hof and his technique, I'll link his channel and meditation in the description, but pretty much Wim Hof's breathing method consists of above average intensity of breathing and then holding the breath for extended periods of time. This type of breathing exercise has been proven by science to reduce the effects of cold sensation in your body and it really is true. If I go into cold water without doing the technique, I can endure the cold water for way less time than if I do the technique and then go in. Wim Hof's technique or not, when you submerge yourself into cold water, you will always experience a shock sensation and your body and your mind signaling you to get out now because you are in a dangerous position. You have to breathe slowly and focus on keeping yourself in the water because that is the main part of learning to control your mind and in turn, body. I recommend setting an alarm before you get into the water as that will let you know when you actually need to get out and not to do it out of emotion. Once you get out and warm up a little bit, that's where the good effects of cold water are noticed and I'll let you experience that for yourself. So turn off this video and go into a cold shower or drive to your nearest lake. Do the Wim Hof breathing method and go in for a couple of minutes. Keep practicing it daily or as much as possible and you will notice how much you gain control over yourself and how much you can better deal with uncertain and uncomfortable situations.